All right, good morning and happy asynchronous Wednesday. If there is such a thing, asynchronous, that means us teachers do not get to see us, you kids. Uh, how can that be a happy day? Right? We're all missing you guys. Anyway, this is what's known as, don't tell anybody, a rewarding warm-up. You will see at the end why... I choose to call this a rewarding warm-up, all right? You do this, and you will be rewarded at the end, okay? All right, no cash prizes, but prizes just the same. All right, you know the drill. Pause it, go try it, come back, check your answers, or come back and get some hints, and then try it again, and see how you do. All right? Okay, see you in a bit. And the bit is up. First off, let's cross off that eight. Got to know what day it is, right? All right, easy diamonds, right? 63 and 16, that's a seven times nine is 63, seven plus nine, 16. And we quickly get into multiplying decimals. <clears throat> I realized the other day that uh, I've been doing too many decimals where you multiply one decimal times another and everything's in a tense place. So you're only moving it over two spots, which is, the same number of decimals there are, and that's an easy way to get it wrong, or get it right while doing it wrong, uh, which is dangerous, right? Uh, if you count the decimals, which is not what you're supposed to do to figure out how many spaces you go back in your answer, you can still get it right. Well, that's bad news, right? So I want to reemphasize what you are actually counting when you do these, okay? So 63 hundredths and 7 and 9 tenths. I'm going, sorry, 7 and 9 hundredths. 7 and 9 hundredths, right? 7 plus 9 hundredths is 7 and 9 hundredths. How do you know that? Because you line up the decimal. And if there is no decimal, you're putting it to the right, right? And when I go add those, that looks a little weird. So I'm going to fill in zeros. 7 is the same as 7.00. I'm allowed to do that. You add. The decimal comes straight down when you add, and that's what you get, right? When you multiply, you go 7 times 9 is 63. Now, I had to pretend there was no decimal here. Now, there is no decimal there, right? I didn't have to move anything, right? But here, to pretend that's a 9, I had to move this two spots to the right. So in my answer, I got to move it two spots to the left. That's how we get that, right? How about eight thousandths and forty-two hundredths? Well, I'm going to go four tenths, which is the same as forty hundredths, and two hundredths, right? When I add those, line up the decimals. Fill in zeros if it makes it less confusing, and it usually does. And you get forty-two hundredths when you add. Make your twos better than me. And then when you multiply, 4 times 2 is 8. Now here I had to move it over once to pretend there was no decimal. Here I had to move it over twice to pretend there's no decimal. That's a total of 3 spots, so I have to go back 3 spots in my answer. Fill in the egg carton, 0 .008. See how we got that? Now what's going on here? Well, same idea. 2 tenths this time, or 20 hundredths. And... Four hundredths. It's a total of twenty-four hundredths. When I multiply, two times four is eight. I had to move it over once there to pretend there wasn't there was no decimal, and twice there. That's three spots total. Fill in the egg cart. Okay. How about nine ten thousandths and six hundredths? That stump you. Three hundredths and three hundredths. When I add three hundredths and three hundredths, line up the decimals. Decimal comes straight down. Add, sorry, I can add 3 and 3 is 6, right? 3 times 3 is 9 when I multiply. Now, in order to pretend that was no decimal, I had to move it over twice. Here, I had to move it over twice. That's a total of four spots I have to go back in my answer. 1, 2, 3, 4. Fill in that egg cart. 0 0.0009, 9 ten thousandths. All right? So good practice on something we needed to work on. Uh, what do you do when you add decimals? Line up the decimal. Fill in a zero there. 11, 9, 19, and 13 hundredths. 
I started on the number line at negative 6, and I subtracted 9. That means I went that way 9 more. Okay. Now, again, you can always turn all of your subtracting integer problems into adding the opposite. So this negative 6, instead of subtracting 9, I'm going to add negative 9. I owe 6 plus I owe 9 more. I owe 15. And again, go back to the number line. You start at negative 6, and then I subtract 9. I go that way 9 more spots. It's going to be negative 15. Okay, I'm subtracting. i got to go from left to right here, right? 8 minus 3 is 5, and 5 minus 4 is 1. 15, and then I spend 20. I don't have enough, huh? I'm going to owe some. How much will I owe? I'm going to owe 5. I owe 9 plus 14. That's not negative 23. I owe 9, but I have 14. Do I have more than I owe? Yeah. How much more? Well, I can pay 9, and then I would have 5 left positive. Okay. How do I do this? I can't add or subtract 15 and 20. So I need a common denominator. 15 and 20 both go into 60, so I'm changing this to 60th. Now, what did I do to the 15 to make it 60? That's on the clock, huh? 15, 30, 45, 60. I would times it by 4. So don't put a 4 up here. Do 11 times 4. All right, I did 15 times 4. I did 11 times 4. 4 over 4 is 1. So I just rename this, okay, common denominator. Now I'm going to subtract... 7 20ths. Now 20 goes into 60 how many times? 3. I don't put a 3 there. I go 7 times 3. Now 44 minus 21 equals 23 60ths. How'd you do? Okay. Now got to tell you a little secret. Tomorrow night's homework. Look at that. Look at that. Aha, you got some answers. You got some answers. It pays to do the warm up. When you do the warm up, homework's easy. When you do the warm up and the homework, the tests are easy. All right, that's some of the bonus you get today. Six seventh minus one fourth. Let's get a common denominator. Let's go to 20 eighths. I did seven times four. I don't put a four there, I put six times four there. Here I did four times seven. And now I have to do 7 times 1 here, right? 4 times 7, 1 times 7. This is the danger one, right? Because you can do it wrong, get it right. 24 minus 7 is 17, 28. Now here, 3 goes into 12. So I'm going to stay with the 12ths here. Why change it if you don't have to, right? Now I only have to change one of these, right? Now 3 times 4, so i got a 1 times 4. 7 twelfths minus 4 twelfths is 3 twelfths. Now, if this was like on a pizzazz worksheet or something, and you did that, and you couldn't find 3 twelfths, but you're pretty sure you did this right, what do you do? See if you can simplify. Is there a number that goes into 3 and 12? Yeah, 3, huh? 3 goes into 3 once, goes into 12 four times. So this simplifies to 1 fourth. 1 fourth is the same as 3 twelfths, but that's the answer you're going to find. It's like on a pizzazz worksheet, probably. Huh? All right, eighths and fifths. I'm going 40ths. Now, here I did 5 times 8. So I don't put 8 there. I put 4 times 8 there. 4 fifths is the same as 32 fortieths. Here I did 8 times 5. I'm not putting a 5 there. I put 3 times 5. Now, 32 minus 15 is 17. So my answer is 17 fortieths. Ninths and fourths. What number do four and nine go into? Well, four times nine, 36, right? I did nine times four. So I don't put a four there. What do I put there? Seven times four, right? Here I did four times nine, so I go one times nine. And I'm subtracting again. 28 36 minus 9 36. 28 minus 9 is... Hello, 27, well, sorry, 17, 
Uh, hello, hello, Mr. Daniel, wake up. All right, what do we got here? I got to do parentheses first, right? Two fifths plus one half. I'm going to go to tenths on these, right? Two fifths is how many tenths? I did five times two. I got to go two times two. That's four tenths. One half is how many tenths? Well, what's half a tenth? Five, right? Now, another way of looking at that, two times five, one times five. Four tenths plus five tenths is nine tenths minus three tenths is six tenths. Now, if this was a pizzazz worksheet and you couldn't find six tenths, go see if you can simplify, right? Both of these are even, so what number goes into it? Two goes into every even number. So two goes into six three times, goes into ten five times. All right, got to do parentheses first. Thirds and fourths. Two thirds minus one fourth. Let's write it with some space on this back. Three and four both go into 12. And again, if the numbers are right next to each other, three is right next to four. The smallest denominator or the smallest common multiple of three and four is three times four. Okay, that's true when numbers are right next to each other. Three times four, two times four. So three, two thirds is eight twelfths. Four times three to get 12, one times three. Eight twelfths minus three twelfths is five twelfths. Now, I'm not done. I got five eighths plus five twelfths. What number do five or twelve eight and twelve go into? I can do eight times twelve, but there's actually a smaller number. Eight and twelve both go into twenty-four. Okay. The smaller number, I'm not multiplying as big a number, it's usually easier to deal with. I did eight times three, so I have to go five times three on the top. Here I did 12 times 2, so I have to go 5 times 2. And I'm adding these, right? 15 plus 10, 25, 24. So if this was like on a pizzazz worksheet, you probably couldn't find the answer if it was that. But that's improper. I'm going to use 24 of those 24s to make one big hole, right? And if I use 24 of them, only one of them will be left. So 1 and 1 24th on that one. two-thirds. I did that subtract, right? Oh, good. For a minute there, I thought I added. So, this ends up being 1 and 1 24th. Let's put a box around that answer. Now, what's that? That's one whole. 3 fourths plus 1 16th. I'm lucky. Why am I lucky? Because 4 fits into 16. So, I'm changing these to 16th. I don't have to deal with that bottom one. It's already done for me. But, Three-fourths is how many sixteenths? I did four times four, so I got to go three times four. Twelve-sixteenths plus one-sixteenth, I'm adding, right? Yeah. Equals thirteen-sixteenths. So that parentheses becomes thirteen-sixteenths. And I had one whole, or sixteen-sixteenths. And I subtract thirteen, that leaves me with three-sixteenths. Okay? All right, last two. One-six and one-six is... 2 sixths. So I have to add 1 half plus 2 six. Now, both of these go into 6, right? So that's good. I don't have to mess with that 2 six. Here I just have to change a half is how many 6? 3. And 3 plus 2 is 5 six. Now here, halves and thirds. I'm going to go to sixths. Right? One half, we already figured out, is three six. Two thirds is how many six? Three times two, two times two. That's a total of seven six. Now I'm not going to bother making that improper yet, or uh, a mixed number yet, okay? Because now I have to do seven six minus one fourth. And what I'm saying, I know I'm going to subtract, so it's going to get smaller anyway. So it might not be improper. Now, what do six and four both go into? Twelve. 6 times 2 and 7 times 2, 14 twelfths, right? 4 times 3 and 1 times 3. Now 14 twelfths minus 3 twelfths equals 11 twelfths. Okay? Now I promised you more bonus. Check it out. 6 sevenths minus 1 fourth. 
7 twelfths minus 1 third. All right? 4 fifths minus 3 eighths. 7 ninths minus 1 fourth. See this? 2 fifths plus 1 half minus 3 tenths. Boom. 5 eighths plus 2 thirds minus. Boom. Boom. And these word problems, which are hard to figure out, are these last two. Okay? So, total bonus. You do the warm up. Okay, Ms. Teichman's going to help you on some of these early ones. I'm helping you on all the late ones, right? And then tomorrow night's homework, you got all these done for you? Oh, aren't you glad you're one of those kids with integrity that does the warm-up every day? Yeah, you need to be rewarded. Pat yourself on the back and have a great day. And don't forget those easy points. Love the limerick on this one. You're going to have fun with that today. All right, have a good day, everybody.